Get a tragic here, and welcome to turn one for mission two of Galaxy Defenders Corset. Now, just before we start, I'm, I was looking over my heroes, and there's a few adjustments that I want to do here. The starters, I think we're actually going to take the nano barrier off this guy and return his passive ability, and we're going to cover up this guy. So we're giving the marrow, nano barrier to Agent S and we're returning Hulk getting back his trap ability. So you'll see that in action a bit later. Also, I kind of think I want to swap the position of these two guys. See, the way it works is you give one agent the alpha agent symbol, okay? Say Ripley. And this is actually an important step of the game because there is a card, an, activate, an alien activation card, that will only activate aliens assigned to the leader. So you want to constantly move this around. Now, because of the trap ability and stuff, I probably want to start with him first. But I want to try, basically I'm going to be starting with him or him or her most of the time, because these are sort of auxiliary characters. So I'm thinking I might actually move in the order, because like say I start with Ripley, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, back to her. If I start with the Hulk, it'll go one, two, three, four. What I'm trying to say is here that this guy's ability that gives him the alien weapons only triggers if he kills the alien. And there's a lot of aliens to kill in the first couple of turns. So we kind of want him to always go last if we can help it. So I'm going to swap those guys around because we're going to be utilizing Hulk's, you know, swappy, majiggery dewy thing. So I'm just going to pull this over, like so. It's a little awkward to reach everything. Now, while I was doing this, I was also thinking about the uh, biotech agent down here. Now the biotech agent, I've given him the gun, which is a really good ability for him, but I'm kind of thinking we don't really need the gun, so I'm going to take that off him. Because if you look at the map here, you can see there's not a lot of, uh, it's all, you know, there's not a lot of open space for that gun to go anywhere. The gun is actually just a device, which is one of the ones we can freely give anyone, any device in the game. And instead, we're going to give him the spy drone which allows us to reveal signals. And that'll help us find these, uh, these scientists. You'll see that in action in a sec. And just in that same vein, this is our sniper. Uh, I'm going to take that away and give him an ammo belt so he can gain some extra ammo. And I'm gonna take the heal bot away from him and give him a destroy signal device. Now, these are just uh, just some little tweaks, which I think are gonna help us. I'm just gonna pause the game, because I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rotate all these guys so it's easier for me to film. It'll just take a little bit of finagling. Okay, so that's fixed. It looks a little weird on the table, but I think it'll work a lot better when I'm zoomed in. Because when I'm zoomed in on an agent, it'll actually sort of be the correct orientation. Okay, let's do this, let's get started. Okay, so here's the deal. There's a couple of things to take note of here. For starters, the goal of this game is not to kill aliens, or this mission is not to kill aliens, it's to capture and secure the fleeing scientists, and the personal goal, that's not a mission goal, is to find weapons. Now to do searches, we have to get into the labs. So we've got to clear out these three aliens as quickly as possible, preferably rescue the scientists. Each of these places, so there's one scientist and one alien in each of them, okay? Because that's the way it was set up. Each teleport point has one scientist and one alien in it to start with. Now we have to rescue three or more scientists for a successful mission, as well as, you know, not have more than half rounded down of our agents killed to be successful, right? So that's our goal, let's get into it. So the most important thing we've got to do at this very initial stage is to set up our, our starting positions. Now remember we are playing with all the optional things on, so we've got facing and close combat and all that kind of junk. Okay, that's our starting position. So we've got Ripley, Dutch, 
Agent uh, S or whatever his name is. Yeah, Agent S, the sniper, the biotech, and Agent N, who's another shotgun dude. Now, our initial goal is to exploit the AI cards, which don't function when there's no line of sight. So we're gonna be hiding behind this hill to force everything to come down here, including the signals. And once the signals get close, we can run out and save them. That is the plan. And we're gonna try and exploit the, the, the AI card so we don't take any damage if we're lucky, depending on how we roll. So that's the opening sequence. It's gonna be very tight. We're gonna try and clear this area and then we're gonna bolt into the dungeons. I mean, the, not dungeons, uh, <laughs> scientific labs. Another thing to note is you wouldn't know this unless you've played the game a few times, but we have N, event card N is in the first five cards. Event card N is the card, I'm pretty sure it's N, is the card that allows us to reflip our tactics, okay? Which is a huge bonus. So that, that basically means is that if we should all burn all our tactics in the first five turns. Normally once you use a tactic, you can't refresh it until the next mission. We're gonna give the GD symbol to Dutch. And he's gonna go first. Sorry if there's a bit of noise, but it's getting really hot in Australia, so I've got to have the air conditioning on. Now, I've done a bit of a rejigging to the deployment. The opening deployment in this particular quest for this particular strategy that I'm using is incredibly important, because what happens is the aliens always target the player with the most wounds, right? That's a, a rule of the AI system. Now, when there's a tie, it targets the player with the least health, okay? Like the least printed health. And the least printed health for us is our sniper, Agent S, over here, who's only got six health, like very, very weak. Now, our strategy is to hide behind this hill and let the aliens come to us and then just murderize them like focused fire, clearing the way for the signals to move out of the scientific labs. Now, because the way signals works, as soon as they come into line of sight, they're revealed. So the longer we don't reveal them, the better, which is also why we're hiding behind this hill. We want the signals to get like down to here, these two kind of areas, before they're revealed. And that way we don't have to deal with any monsters and we can just run in and save any scientists. But to do that, we have to protect our sniper because he's gonna, everyone's gonna be gunning for him. Which means we wanna basically completely fill this hex with units and have him where he's standing now and the reason for that is if even like say this place was free an alien could move straight through because humans don't block movement for aliens and go right in there so the only way this concept is work this strategy works is to keep that entire hex full of units there's only going to be one turn where this is going to be a problem okay and the reason why is our very first turn, uh, we're gonna leave a hole in the hex, but well, there's nothing we can do about it, basically. So as long as we don't draw the red alien movement, we're fine. But if we don't draw the red alien movement in our first five turns, like the first round, then it's gonna be a real problem, this entire thing. I'm pretty sure it will. There's not many, there's not many cards in here, so the chances are fairly high that we'll draw one of the three cards that activates the, the red alien. Okay, let's get into this. So starting with Dutch, he's just gonna go one to here, and then he's gonna use his action, yoink, to drop his trap. Okay, so the first card is, hmm, activate all spine critters, not a problem. Okay, so there's our spine critter. Now he is out of line of sight, so he activates the very bottom one, which is move up to two areas towards the most wounded agent. So that is just one out the door, two. Okay, so plan is working so far. Now it's Ripley's turn, and Ripley, uh, except I've got the wrong freaking models. Okay, so now it's Ripley's turn. Now remember, agents can move through other agents. He's just gonna go one, two, three, and plug this hole like that and then that's gonna be the end of her turn. 
Uh, maybe we're overkilling it with this idea. Okay, I'm going to scrap all that terribly long and involved planning I just did. And she's going to use the fourth movement to go here. No, she's not. Right, no, we've got to think about the, the line of sight for the, the signals. Oh, it's such a complicated first couple of turns. Yeah, so she's just going to go and stay where she is. And that's going to be the end of her turn. And we go straight to the next alien card. Okay, flick. Activate all arachnids. <laughs> okay, so this is the moment we've prepared for. So he comes out of the doorway. One, two, three, and he can't move anywhere else. And that's where he stops. Mission accomplished. Now, I don't know if I said this. Basically, this is a doorway, these yellow things. They, he can go out windows, but they've actually put this little block marker on this window to force him to come around the way he went. Like otherwise, he could go around the other side, but the map is designed to force him the way he went. So we knew which way it was gonna come and our little blockade worked. So if we had any spaces here, like say, even if that was a space or if this was a space, this guy would have moved right in there and engaged all those people and none of them would be able to move. Okay, so it's the Biotech's turn. So he's gonna go one, two and engage this guy and turn around so he can shoot him. And then he's gonna do a shot with a shotgun, which unfortunately is gonna do area damage and uh, might nick Dutch over there. Let's hope not. Okay, so here's our first roll. So he has three attack dice. Okay. Boom, he gets two hits. He gets, because a lightning bolt counts as a hit for him. So that's two hits. So let's roll versus Dutch. Okay, he gets a lightning bolt, which is the same as an armor, plus an armor, so no damage to Dutch. And now we need a really bad roll for the alien. Oh, terrible. So because this guy is a red alien, a lightning bolt is actually two armor. So that's no damage whatsoever done to anybody. Okay, next. Yoink. Activate all blue aliens. Better bring this up. Okay, so there's two blue aliens now, and this is why we did the things the way we did it, because this guy activates. The way I do it is I always go from closest to agents outwards in rings. So this guy's the closest, so he activates. He is technically not in line of sight to this guy. Actually, after checking, he is in line of sight. So he's gonna move to using the first one, which is move adjacent to the closest agent and attack with jaws. So he's gonna move in here and step on the trap, which doesn't activate till his next activation. And then he's gonna attack Dutch with Jaws. And Jaws is three red dice. Okay, so that is one hit, two hits and a lightning bolt, which counts as another hit, so that's three hits. Okay. Good rolls, please. Boom. He gets one shield and two damage. Okay, not a good start. Bam. Okay, so now it is uh, Sniper's turn. And he's going to stay where he is, but he is going to lie down. So to lie down, we just move that to say it's activated. So if you look at these little symbols here, in the top corner, it's plus two hits for lying down. But we're also plus two defense die for ranged attacks versus us. Really cool. The two little feet is how much it costs you to chain stand. So it's two movement points to stand up from lying down or to lie down from standing up. And it's one movement point to get over to kneeling. Then at the bottom, you see versus melee, we are minus two defense die. We're really vulnerable to melee. And also, because we're lying down, we're completely immune to walking. We can't move while we're lying down. So, like, if I flip it over and we have a look at kneeling, 
Kneeling is basically exactly the same, but not as harsh. So it's plus one hit, plus one defense die. It's minus one defense die versus melee, but we can move for the move points of two. So every hex costs two instead of one. Anyway, regardless of all that, we are lying this sucker down. Boom, so we've lied down. Now, he is going to attack uh, Red Alien as well. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use his action to flip over this and give us one extra hit dice. So we now roll five dice. Let's take this Red Alien out as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's five alien, five red dice. Come on. Bam. Okay, there's an all right roll. We have one, two, three hits. Uh, during editing, I noticed that he rolled an ammo. So, junk, he loses an ammo as well. Plus a lightning bolt. Now, the lightning bolt in this case doesn't do anything for us. But remember, we have plus two hits from lying down. So that is actually one, two, three, four, five, six hits. So I'll go through this slow the first time, but we'll speed it up. So that gives him six defense dice, okay? But remember, we're playing the high impact rule, which means you never get to roll more than five defense dice, so one's taken away. Okay. Bam. So that means he's only got five to roll already. But he's also, if you look at his weapon, it says if one or less, minus one defense die. So that's another one taken away. And that leaves him with four dice. So that's it. Now the hit roll rules are a little bit imprecise. And this is a an alternative rule, it's like a, it's called the high impact optional rule. Now basically what it says is that you just roll a maximum of five dice. So the question is, because we're getting minus one defense die, does that mean that he gets, he actually rolls five, because he had six, minus one from the card ability gives him uh, five which means the high impact rules don't kick in. But the way I play it is that the high impact rules kick in as you're assembling your dice pool. So that's the way I did it. So you assemble the dice pool, which is six, but we can only have a maximum of five, and then all dice modifications are done from there, which means that he ends up with four, which means we have two guaranteed hits. Well, unless he rolls a lightning bolt. Come on, bad rolling. Oh, okay, so he gets one, two, three defense, which means he takes three damage. Okay, three damage. Actually, I might use, I use blue dice for the alien so I don't get them mixed up with the agent health. And now we activate the next card. Oh, it's another activate all blue aliens. Sweet. Okay, so our a tremendous amount of early planning is paying off. So there's only two blue aliens on the field. The spine crawler activates, but he's in the trap, so he skips his activation, and the trap is returned to Dutch. The beta is out of line of sight of everybody, so he actually moves one space and regenerates because his bottom ability says move one area towards the closest agent and use regenerate. So now we have the final turn and we're going to use this guy here. So he is going to go, he's got a movement of five. So what we really wanted to do, so basically almost everything went to plan. We really wanted to have a one of our agents get up into this space here to force him to go backwards. I mean, he's gonna get a shot off. But what we're gonna do is move this guy one step closer, and then he is also gonna lie down. Okay, so I just did a huge, huge error that I've gotta correct. 
<laughs> basically uh, I added two dice for him being lying down instead of adding two hits plus I added two hits so I rolled five dice got a whole bunch of hits then added two hits plus I rolled a lightning bolt which added another two hits and I did like ridiculous amounts of damage to everybody like I put like 11 damage or something on Dutch and it was just a disaster so so we're gonna do it right this time so he's got the three dice only let's do this BAM okay so that's a fantastic roll but there's a lot of nastiness going on as well basically he has one two three four damage plus the other two damage so that's six damage but he's also rolled a gun jam and he's rolled an ammo uh, I actually forgot to put out his ammo he starts with three so he's got one hour ammo left and now his guns jam okay so that's one two three four dice uh, four hits plus two which is six hits but we only roll five rolling for red Yoing! One, two, three, four shields, but one goes through and the other two damage goes through, okay? Uh, no, other one damage goes through. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, minus one, two, three, four, which leaves two damage. Okay, so he's got three damage, he takes another two damage, which makes him take five damage which means he's dead yoink okay so one dead alien yoink bam and we take one of these and I like to place these in the I'll put this in the center and what I like to do is just mark them just to say hey we've uh, picked that up this round because it ends up sometimes you end up with tons of aliens and you can kind of forget, oh, did I kill it this turn or did I put one out last turn or this way if there isn't a marker on it, we haven't put it one out this turn. Okay, so now with any luck, we can also kill the spine critter who also gets to roll five, but he's only got four health. So really bad roll, please. Bang. Okay, so that is uh, six minus one, two, three which means he takes three damage so he survives excellent bam okay now we're rolling for Dutch come on oh my god terrible roll he takes six damage minus one which means he gets five damage and he's got no lightning bolts so that's five humongous damage. Yonk. Which takes him to seven damage. And finally we roll for the biotech. Come on! He gets six minus one, two, and the bolt does nothing. So he oh <laughs> he also gets uh four damage. Wow. Don't want to do too many of these uh <laughs> these area effect rolls okay so now we activate and activate all Xeno beaters there's only one Xeno beater and he is in range now he's in range of both these guys but you always attack the person with the most damage which is Dutch with seven damage so he's gonna use his second ability I think it is yeah attack with blaster and move away one area so his blaster is three dice come on okay so that is two damage the lightning bolt does nothing in this instance so he's rolling versus two come on yes and he blocks it no worries and then he moves one area backwards always go backwards from whence you came so he's now back out of line of sight okay and that's the end of that plus the correction for what we did last time okay I think we're back on track now let's draw the event card Yoink. 
Okay, what have we got here? Alien plans. Okay, so that is two agents each discard one ammo. Well, I think we're going to take one from the biotech because he's going to be healing pretty much for the rest of the game. He only gets a few shots off and we want to minimize the use of his shotgun while we're all, you know, bunched up anyway. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do Agent N's awesome ability, which is why we put him as the last person to shoot, just so we could do this. Basically, every time he kills an alien, he gets to draw a weapon and he can use it regardless of uh, the uh, class restrictions. Oh, what's he got? Oh. There we go, got one. Railgun. If you're wondering, I had my eyes shut during all that. Wow, look at that sucker. Okay, so this is the, the alien sniper rifle. Now we can use this even though we, we're not a sniper because we've got, we can ignore class restrictions. Five dice, range of five. It's an alien gun, so it can't jam and it can't run out of ammo and it has minus one lightning bolt for defense die. Now there is a caveat with this ability. Basically, for starters, it replaces this gun. Okay, so boom, that gun's now replaced. But because he doesn't have the alien technology skill, if he rolls an alien skull, or a jam signal, I think it is. Yeah, jam signal. The entire roll is failed because he can't figure out how to fire the weapon or something. So it's a bit of a dangerous move, but it uh, shouldn't be too bad. But the point is we've got both of our ridiculous shotguns off the table, so we're not going to be doing all that area damage to each other anymore. Okay, now he has to discard his weapon. So his ability says, the weapon can be used once and then discarded. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that means for his other weapon. I'm going to say that it retains its ammo count, but it will be unjammed. I don't know, I have to check that out in the forums. I'll just leave them up there for now, just in case. And I think we'll take one damage from Ripley, uh, one bullet from Ripley. Okay, so that's the first effect done. Two agents discard ammo. Just so we know what happened, I took one from the biotech, one from Ripley. Second, all signals move one area towards the alpha agent. So our plan is coming to fruition. So this one moves in, this one moves down. This one goes here, this one goes here. Actually, the alpha agent, the alpha agent is Dutch. So one, two, three, four, five, six versus one, two, three, four, five. So they would actually go through the window like that. These dudes up the top go one, two. They're heading for the only exit, which are these two doors here of the mothership. And these guys, uh, the only exit from this room is this door here and this door here. So they're going to come down like that. Okay, and the second bit is teleport in three signals. So the way I do signals is that I roll three die and then I resolve them from top to bottom if there's an issue. Bam! A gun, a lightning bolt and a gun. So we have from top to bottom of the rolls we have the gun, the lightning bolt, and then the gun. And that is the end of that. Okay, so I think we did very well that round. We took a little more damage than I would like to have. Uh, I wasn't quite prepared for the power of that uh, uh, high impact damage rule. But uh, even so, we killed the red alien, which is good. The blue alien here only has one point of damage on, so we can kill him first turn without any issues, which will mean that uh, we'll get another very easy alien artifact. I'll just take that off because the turn is over. And that's about it. Well, that's turn one. 
I'll see you guys next time.